In this video I'll show how to interface with an LED and flash it on and off using the Nucleo board. To start, here's the circuit we'll be building. On the Nucleo board we'll use pin A1 and the ground. So this is a diagram of the Nucleo board. You can see there's a ground here and here's pin A1 that we'll be using to flash the LED. Back to the circuit, we'll be using a 100 ohm resistor in series with this LED. And just a refresh on LEDs, the standard is that the longer side is the anode, which is positive, and the shorter side is the cathode, which is negative. And keep that in mind when you're hooking it up to the breadboard. Let's review two more things before we get to work. This here is a diagram of the architecture of the microcontroller. A few key points. This is the memory where the program code, the variables, and the peripheral registers live. Here is the reset and clock control, which is important. Here is the GPIO ports and some of your different peripherals. Last thing before opening up the IDE, this is the reference manual for the microcontroller. I'll scroll down to section 7, which covers the GPIO. Clicking on it takes me directly to that section. And if I scroll down to the registers, under GPIO registers, there are a number of important registers. For this project, the GPIO port mode register is important. This is how we'll actually configure the pin as an output. We could also configure it as an input if we needed, or in one of the alternate function modes. The output type register is important. We can configure it as push, pull, or open drain. These are some of the different registers we'll need to configure in order to use the IO pin. Another register that will come up is the clock control register. If I go to section 6 here, this is the reset and clock control, and if I scroll down to the RCC registers, clicking on it takes me directly there. In order to even use the GPIO pin, we need to go into the AHB1 enable register and enable the clock for port A. It's important to get used to the reference manual early, it's a very useful tool to have. Okay, now to open up the IDE. So this is the STM32 Cube IDE. I've got mine in dark mode, but I am just running the latest revision as of today. So to start, file, new, STM32 project. I'll go through this process two different ways. The first way is completely on Rails, using all of the features of the STM32 Cube IDE. And the second way is the more streamlined, bare bones method. To start, I'll go through the on Rails method. This is the project creation wizard. I will start by typing in the part number of the microcontroller, which is the STM32F446RET6 microcontroller. And as I click on it, down here in the middle, it pulls up that part number. And interestingly, it also pulls up the Nucleo F446RE board. So this IDE knows that there exists an off-the-shelf development board that contains this microcontroller. And so I'll select this right here. And what this does is it imports all of the data specific to this microcontroller into the project. So it makes setting it up and configuring it a breeze. Target language C++ project name, I will call it 01 LED blink. Uh, we'll target this as an executable and we'll leave this as is. So here's a graphic of the microcontroller IC and you can see different pin names, PC0, PC1, PA0, PA1, etc. Just to note that if we go back to this diagram of the Nucleo board, you can see the pin names of the microcontroller pins, PA0, PA1, PC1, PC0, but then right next to it you have a different set of labels. You have a different set of names. Pin A0, pin A1, A2, A3, etc. What's important to note here is that there are a different set of names. So just keep in mind that you'll have to refer to the diagram for your Nucleo board to know which Nucleo pins correspond to which pins on the microcontroller. So for our project, let's use pin A1 on the Nucleo board, which conveniently maps onto PA1 on the microcontroller. So 
back to the configurator, PA1, I'll click on it. I'll set it up as a GPIO output that highlights it green and pins it. If I go to the left pane here, system core, GPIO, here is PA1 that we just selected. And here, if we needed to, we, can, we could further configure this pin, but for now, the defaults are okay. We're going to leave the clock configuration as default, and actually we can go ahead and start writing the code. I'm going to go into this pane here where I can navigate the different files for this project. Under core, src, source, and the main.c file is what we need. I'll double click on it. And that pulls up the .c file where we can write the code for this project. So here there's a lot of auto-generated code by the IDE. And if we hit the build button right here, which is symbolized by this hammer, it will build the code for us. It will take into consideration the changes we made here in the IOC and apply them into our main.c file. So I'll click on the build button. And now our main.c file should have some additional code based on the changes we made in the IOC, specifically to configure that port A pin one that we want to drive the LED. So we have a MX GPIO init function definition here that is actually called in our main function. And all of this is just a reflection of the changes we made in the configurator. So to take an example, right now the GPIO speed is low, but if I go back to the configurator, GPIO PA1, and I change the speed to high, right? And I go back to the main.c file. Well, right now you can see that, well, no, it doesn't look like anything happened, but that's because I haven't hit the build button. Once I hit the build button, it will take some time. It will think a little bit and our code is updated based on the changes we made to the configurator. So with all this background work done, actually flashing the LED is trivial. Really all we need to do is write a couple of lines of code. Hal underscore GPIO underscore toggle pin. This function takes two arguments, the port and the pin. So the port will be GPIO A, GPIO A for GPIO port A, and the pin, which is GPIO underscore pin underscore one. So if I built and run this code right now, it would toggle the pin, but, but this while loop will execute really, really fast, and you would not even be able to tell that the, pin, that the LED is blinking. So we'll go ahead and add a delay here, so how underscore delay is the function for that. And we'll let it flash once a second, so we'll give it a thousand millisecond delay. And so with that done, we can go ahead and build the code again and hit this green button here to flash the code to the board. So you can see here on this terminal that the IDE was able to communicate with the programmer and flash the code to the board. And if you look at the LED, it is blinking as expected. But I mentioned that there were two ways to go about this. The on rails method of using the configurator and the more hands on approach of writing the code ourselves. So you can see here we have all this code written just to flash an LED. And the question is, is it possible to cut this, cut a lot of this out? And the answer is yes. I'll start by deleting all of this code that we have here. So now the main.c is empty. And I'll go ahead and paste this code that I have written from before. And you can see in about 30 lines of code, we have everything needed to toggle the LED on and off. Uh, the only thing I'll change is uh, I'll, I'll change the pin from pin zero to pin one. We are still enabling the clock here and this line of code takes care of that. We still create the structure to handle the configuration of the GPIO pin. We still call a how init function to actually perform the initialization. So we have all of the same functionality here, only it's in a much more streamlined format. And under debug, I'll go ahead and delete the IOC. So we aren't even using the IOC configuration here. But with a combination of the STM32 HAL library, 
and some configuration code here, we're able to toggle the LED. So now I'll go ahead and build this code and program the board. And once again, the LED is flashing. So that is two ways to program the STM32F4 microcontroller. On the one hand, we use the configurator to quickly and graphically set things up and only wrote a minimum amount of code to toggle the LED. On the other hand, we use the ST provided HAL hardware abstraction layer library and manually configured the registers to get the same effect.